Okay, guys, let's get to your review video for chapter seven, eight test. I actually have the test up here on my other screen. So I'm just going to start from the beginning um, of chapter seven. Remember, the more you do on your own as far as creating um, your own study guide from the following video, the all in all better uh, results you're going to have. And I've seen this a lot with, the, with, with students comparing your notes to your study buddy as opposed to just going ahead and copying what they have isn't going to get you as good of a grade. Um, some of you are going to really have to organically start from the beginning in order to see the success from what studying can bring. Also, once you have all your answers and once you've you know, match those to a study buddy and maybe debate it on, on where you guys sit, everything coming from PowerPoints, right? I would go back in, um, download PowerPoints, read lecture notes, any of the additional videos that I have been posting, you should be supplementing somewhere. You can't get everything from Ms. Crowley. You got to be either supplementing with those videos I'm posting or you need to be reading the text definitely or even the AMSCO book. Um, put yourself in a testing scenario. Create flashcards with the questions and answers that you've uh, developed from the video. Um, just put yourself in a testing scenario. All right, so let's get to it. Um, from chapter seven, I'm going to ask about the ratification of the Bill of Rights um, and why why we needed it and what was the argument for those that wanted it. That's how you're going to be questioned on the Bill of Rights. Um, you have to definitely know Hamilton's financial plan. You've got three key terms associated with the financial plan. And then definitely what was a lasting consequence because of Hamilton's financial plan. Um, so make sure you have a couple of questions on it. Make sure you know what he wants to do, how he wants to orchestrate it. Um, yeah, so you have like two or three questions just on that. Um, so four questions on Hamilton's financial plan. It's a lot. It is intense, but it's doing a lot of things. So know the three key terms, know the lasting effect of the financial plan, um, understand how the Federalist Party is going to be developed out it. Um, understand how he's going to be using maybe the Constitution and politics to get what he wants. There's a lot in there. You got to know it all to be successful. Okay. Then I'm going to switch to Jefferson. I really want his vision, what, what he really sees the future of the country versus what Hamilton really sees as the future of our country. You have a question about the proclamation of neutrality. Um, and the question is really focusing more on the, the truth of it early on, um, how we're going to benefit from the proclamation of neutrality. You have a question on the Whiskey Rebellion. So make sure you know the Whiskey Rebellion, that event. Um, and kind of how Hamilton plays a role on it, too. That might help you for that question. You have a question on the Naturalization, Alien, and Sedition Acts. Um, mostly like um, the outcome of the Sedition Act in particular is what I'm focusing on. Because we'll have multiple Sedition Acts throughout. That's a continuity, fun word, in American history. You have a question on the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions. and What did they seek to do? Um, after the Treaty of Greenville or during the Treaty of Greenville, we're starting to see peace between American or Native Americans and um, uh, American citizens as we move west. Remember, we never honor treaties with American Indians in American history, but there is a technique that we try that it becomes very unsuccessful. Um, and then the result of all of that will eventually be a cause to something else in the future, which I talked about. So make sure you know all of that. I wanna know about the re revolution of 1800 um, and, and why Jefferson said it was such a revolution of 1800. Um, another Thomas Jefferson question, but this question is covering the federal judiciary. And it was one of the first things that Thomas Jefferson had to deal with when he became president. It's his first event. And I had it on the PowerPoint and I told you the story about it. And then I told you the story doesn't really matter because all you have to know is the outcome of a couple of cases. More about Jefferson um, and the Louisiana Purchase. You have a question about Jefferson and the Louisiana Purchase. You have two questions about Jefferson and the Louisiana Purchase. Make sure you know the story. Make sure you know the outcome. Make sure you know maybe some criticisms 
with Jefferson and the Louisiana Purchase. I just gave you that answer. So um, you have a Lewis and Clark question. All the information is on the PowerPoint slide in my lecture notes. So just go right to that. You have a question about John Marshall and how he saw things. If you know his political affiliation, that'll help you tremendously. Um, you have a question about the Federalist perspective of the War of 1812. Remember, after the Louisiana Purchase, the Federalists threatened to secede. Um, and they have two responses um, to the War of 1812. They're going to threaten to secede, but they're also going to try to do something else. So there's two things you have to know. You have a question on the Battle of New Orleans from the War of 1812. It actually happens in 1815. And remember the long, the the over over uh, over me. the long, um, the longevity or the long impact of the War of 1812. We have this huge burst of national pride. We have big patriotism because we beat the British for the second time in 40 years. So the Battle of New Orleans plays a huge, it's a turning point. Okay, and we, we talked about that when we had lecture last Friday. You have a question about Madison um, kind of um, compromising his convictions. And you're going to have a Jefferson question on how Jefferson compromises his convictions. I want to know what the air of good feelings was. All right, now I'm shifting to chapter eight. Um, I want to know why a market emerged early on in the 1780s and through um, 1820. So it's in the beginning of chapter eight, and we're going to talk about where manufacturing is going to begin, because it's kind of interesting that we, we see it so much as an urban type thing, but we're going to see a transition between rural and urban um, settings for manufacturing to really take off to take advantage of Hamilton's financial plan. How did Americans um, see those who worked hard? That's going to be something you really have to understand for a test question. I want to know the political status of all the demographics in the country. How was white men's political status? What was women's political status? Free blacks political stat uh, status, minority communities political status, even American Indian or those that were enslaved. Make sure you know where everybody stands. You have a question about Republican motherhood. So make sure you know that Benjamin Rush is going to be on your test. And he's definitely he's a physician, but he's proposing this idea of what education can bring. So make sure you know um, Republican motherhood. You have a question, uh, a couple of questions on the Missouri compromise. So you do have to know the story. Um, lasting consequences of the Missouri compromise and maybe different ideas that were embedded in the Missouri Compromise. Maybe one of those ideas didn't pass like the Talmadge Amendment. Make sure you know that. You have a question on gradual emancipation and what that really means. Make sure you understand that most of your Northern states are going to, and this is coming from the stations, most of your Northern states are going to um, eventually become free states, but we really have to examine how that's rendered. Um, they're still giving a lot of authority to property owners. So gradual emancipation is a better technique for them in that they're not going to be hurting property rights and they're giving people time. Um, they're, they're also uh, creating things like manumission, which you had on your quiz today. The manumission is relinquishing of property rights, right? So that's really important. Um, and a lot of Northerners are actually selling their slaves uh, to the, the Deep South. They're not even freeing their slaves through manumission. Um, but they are giving a lot of rights to property owners. So don't think just because you're in the North, you're going to be anti-slavery. It's really not the truth at all. Um, they're gradually doing it very, very slowly. Because, again, property rights are protected in the Constitution and in state constitutions. Unfortunately, slaves are rendered as property in a court of law. Um, how is the federal government continuing to protect slavery in this period of time? We had that in Station 2. Think about who's in the White House. Think about who's in the Senate. Think about who's in the House of Representatives. We have this huge period of time. We even have the era of good feelings where one political party is dominating. What's one aspect of that political party that's protecting slavery. 
Um, now we're moving into what tomorrow's lecture is going to be about, which is the second great awakening. So you have about four or five questions about it. Um, I, we, I need to know um, how the South is involved in the second great awakening. You have a question on that. Um, I need lasting results of the second great awakening or lasting effects. You have a question on that. And then I have like a real key term question about the second great awakening, like just understanding the key term and you'll get it correct. It's kind of a gimme question. You're welcome. I want to know how African-Americans who converted to Christianity, why, why are they so captivated by the second great awakening? And then you have a sermon by Lyman Beecher. He was on your quiz today and I want you to read it. And I want you um, to answer some questions. One of the questions talks about continuities which I don't know if I've used this word a lot in class, but a continuity is something that you see happening, continuing throughout American history, right? So think of it as um, the second great awakening. This is the second great awakening, right? We might be relating to the first or we what's going on in U.S. history to exemplify continuities, okay? So you're gonna see that question, that word in the question. And that's the test. So make sure you're, you're doing the first round of the study guide on your own. Try to do it on your own. Don't just copy what somebody else has. It's definitely going to help you if you're doing it more organically. And then see what somebody else is, uh, someone else has come up with. Compare your notes. You know, we should have an A-push family. You guys, I, I want you to study together. But I don't want you just copying off somebody's phone and what they have. Okay? Um, and then put yourself in a testing scenario. Go back through, read my lecture notes, watch the videos. They'll definitely help you. That's what they're there for. And you have two days um, to prepare for this. So good luck.